Hey guys, good morning. It is 9.30 a.m. June 21st, 2020. Eagle Trading, welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a good weekend. Happy Father's Day to the fathers out there. I wanted to show you a perfect canary in the coal mine stock to watch to see if this market is going to crash. And I hate to just go straight to that terminology, but it's everywhere. I mean, I'm, I, I'm seeing it again. Every time we have a pullback in the market, the videos just start coming out. The talk starts coming out. Crash, crash, crash. And I'm not saying things like this can't happen, but if the quantitative easing is, is starting to pull back, um, the virus is getting a second wave, all these things we talk about, we could definitely have some issues coming into the election. I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there, right? The market's taking on a lot and absorbing it, So, which to me is actually fairly bullish. These pullbacks are are not commensurate in reverse to a V-shaped recovery. In fact, they're more sideways action on SPY, which is indicative of a strong market, believe it or not. There are aspects that are bubbly. We have no doubt about that. We see stuff like, you know, Hertz and, and day traders and all the ingredients of a, of, a, of a topping market, but we continue to see the market's resiliency. So, like I said, you could have two sides to a market. You could have a market that is actually strong internally. Um, we could have a market that's coming out of a short-term recessionary period into a growth phase, which was actually activated by the Fed. And then you could also have a, another aspect of that, which is a complete bubble with a lot of the day traders jumping on junk stocks and pushing prices higher over short periods of time and you know potential bankrupt companies. So that being said, and there's a lot of confusion, you know, what do we look at? What do we, you know, a few years ago I was using Caterpillar as a, as a canary stock and, and, and it helped guide me through um, whether the market was going to collapse or whether the market was bottoming out. I think the perfect stock today is Netflix. Netflix has the earnings to back up the movements that it's seen. It's a perfect stay-at-home theme. It encompasses everything that should be positive about a market. Until you see something like a Netflix break its 20-day moving average, you're not going to have a market collapse. Um, once again, back to simple bar charts, and I'm showing you some trend lines that are very important on Netflix. So let's start with, and Netflix looks bullish here still, continues to look bullish for now. And we'll see if this continues. And I have higher price targets for Netflix until things change. I'll stick with those targets. So a um, few years back, we look on Netflix, and we look at it changing in the movement of the stock. No, no, uh, no moving averages here, just channel lines, okay? So, and I'm gonna show you how these come into effect later. So we have, we push up to a channel line, we get one day over, a little bit too much energy, we retest it, we retest it. We pull back, we can't get it through, we hit it again and again. And then we push through and then back test it. You can see the perfect back test to the penny right there on that line. So this line is very important. We hit it here, we back test it here, you have your line. This is your lower line. Now the upper line is exactly symmetrical, parallel channel to this line. Same thing. Back test energy before we fire to the upside. We can kind of look at it again, open up below it, more energy. We break it, we back test it, right? And then we fail. And then we pull back and what do we do? We retest that same line. Look at that, perfect symmetry. Again, back testing, gap. Holding it as support, pull back through it, can't hold it, a little bit too much energy, need some more time, hit it, hit it, hit it, push through, back test, back test, back test, literally closing right on the line. So these are important lines. So now when we back up and you can see how they work so well, and we can kind of zoom in, and we have another line in there that's more of a momentum line. So look at, these are perfectly parallel lines, and you can see how, where we started here on the initial breakout to the top line, they're working in perfect symmetry. Look at that, touching it right there. And now we're coming into that line over here where we haven't hit it yet, but it should put us somewhere in the 470s, assuming the market doesn't come undone. Um, then you have a momentum line that, that kind of runs in between here, right? It, it kind of held the upper end of the momentum channel of, or of, of, of the wider intermediate, longer term uptrend channel. Um, and once it broke, it wanted to gravitate down towards the bottom. Once again, some you know static and consolidation along there and then literally touches it again and gaps down. Then we hit it again, hit it again, hit it again, can't get through, pull back, hit it again, really stop right on it, and then fire back up, and then now it becomes support. So once again, three super important lines 
that are more important to me than moving averages on Netflix. And we can zoom in in this particular time frame and see how well they work. We're not going from tops of candles to bottoms. We're going from areas of energy and areas of transition. So now we have a intermediate upturn channel, a, a um, long-term and intermediate uptrend channel, and then we have a momentum channel, which we have the bottom of. We can also replicate that higher on the top end, and you can see that there are even higher price targets on that. So if we, um, we draw that as a channel, and we put it somewhere in here, you can see you can see how it's probably going to coincide in the same area depending on the time frame. Now we have two channels coinciding. Once we break that upper channel, we can continue on the momentum channel. So we'll remove that one for now. And you can see that our price targets would be in the 470s depending on the time frame on Netflix. Now if we add in some moving averages, and we'll do the daily, eagle daily, you can see that Netflix would need to break below the 20 before we even think about a market pullback of significance. These, these generals, these stocks like this are going to have to break before the market cracks completely. So if we wanted to kind of catch the trajectory on that, it probably runs somewhere like this. Um, from a horizontal perspective, you're probably going to have to see, depending on the time frame, if this week's going to be vulnerable, you're going to have to see Netflix break below 435 on a close before you can even think about the market collapsing here. Um, and this actually had a strong close, and I'll show you why it's a strong close, and I'll maybe remove this, and this will be the last part of the video. And I can actually remove, let's see here. So, looking at Netflix, what happens with Netflix? Earnings come out, and they sell into the earnings, right? Buy the rumor, sell the news. Earnings were great, fantastic. And if we look at it from a horizontal channel, we can say that this is the earnings, right, opening up and the stock falling back. We go back up and try to recapture that earnings area. And I'll put the horizontal line across here like this. We recapture it with the strength in the market and it can't. It just can't hold it, right? We've had two attempts. Earnings, earnings. Sell the rumor, right? Buy the rumor, they knew it was gonna be strong. They bought it in here. News comes out, they sell it. But they buy it back up again, which is pretty bullish, right? You can see there's a little bit of an intermediate channel also in here, kind of a support channel, but I'm not going to get into crazy with the lines here. But So they sell the earnings, they buy it back again. Now they push it through, which is nice because a lot of guys that, a lot of this overhead is being relieved each time we get up here. Anybody didn't sell it then thought, okay, well now we're breaking higher, we're going to go higher. Nope, pulled back again, pulled back again. And now we're starting to push up and hold this line and we get over this line for four or five days and you're gonna definitely tag the 470s. You can even see some sideways consolidation here though. But the, the more sellers you get to relieve this overhead supply, the more it clears the way for a push higher. And we could get well above that line too. I'm just using the line as a minimum point of reference in, at the 470 area on Netflix. So assuming the market doesn't come unraveled, look for 470 on Netflix. This is my opinion. This is a great stock to watch for, for market weakness. Um, I mean, if you even want to tighten it up and say, you know, I don't want to see it close under 441, which was the opening from three days ago on Wednesday, three trading days ago, um, a close below there would give me a little bit of a, a warning on the overall market. But you're going to have all this up and down movement in S&P 500. You know, the shorts are going to be jumping in, the longs are going to be jumping in, the intraday volatility is going to be crazy. It's the closing prices that we want to follow, and we want to use stocks like this to kind of give us a little bit of a guide as a canary in a call of mind to where the market's headed next. Because these stocks hold up, and these are the ones that have not only just, like I said, strong earnings and have been gravitated towards because they are the stay-at-home theme. If these start to come undone, then you know that the, the market is going to get weaker because great earnings, stay-at-home theme, everything's not holding it up. It's The market's most likely going to be in a bad situation. These continue to hold up and the market trades down. It, you're not looking at a crash. I'm sorry. It's just not going to happen. So use Netflix as a great canary in the coal mine stock to kind of guide you on the market. Like I said, look at the shorter term time frame if you want. Um, but my target's 470s on Netflix, assuming the market doesn't come undone. And we'll get into the S&P 500 um, and the New York Stock Exchange and Dow numbers on a video later, probably tonight. Um, should be interesting to see how the futures open up. 
Not that they've been a great indicator of how we're going to open the next day because they're easily manipulated given the volume. Um, but I'm curious to see how they open up. I'm expecting a little bit of weakness for sure. Um, but this market's had a lot of surprises, so we'll see how it goes.